Apostle, I'm struggling with sickness. Go to that which is written. Open your Bible. Find out there were sick people in the Bible who were healed. What did they do? This world is not designed for spirits. It's a three-dimensional framework of existence. Three-dimensional entity. So in case a spirit has jurisdiction within this context, a man permitted that spirit to function. In fact, prayer is earthly permission for heavenly interference. To be an effective ambassador or to be an effective witness there are three stages you must pass through please write this down this is now proper discipleship to be an effective ambassador God is preparing you now to release you to your world to be an effective ambassador an effective witness there are three levels that you must pass through non-negotiable number one transformation this is the first level of dealings that you must go through seasons of intense transformation when you want to know the power of transformation you have to study insects an insect transits as we know from egg Lava, am I right on that? Pupa and then adult. It's the same insect. But the insect cannot, what the egg can do, the lava cannot do. What the lava can do, the pupa cannot do. It is the full grown adult insect that can fly and do a lot of things. That means within the same insect are possibilities. But he has to change states to be able to manifest them. Within the same you is the ability to take the healing anointing. Within the same you is the ability to be a billionaire. Within the same you is the ability to be a leader over nations in politics and governance. But not this version of you. So when God comes to you and says follow me. That begins the process of transformation. Are we together now? The king demands that you come as you are. But you are not used as you are. You come as you are but you are made. He's a maker. Please listen. There are many people praying prayers that cannot be answered at the level they are. It becomes a risk to the body of Christ if the prayer you are crying for is being answered. Lord, I pray that you give me one billion. And God says, I can give. I am a giver. It is, it is the signature of fatherhood to give. But this level of you, <clears throat> with the flesh that is alive, with the fleshly encumbrances is going to be very difficult you cannot be trusted you see most believers do not understand that transformation qualifies you to manifest deeper things in the spirit transformation qualifies you to manifest deeper things in the spirit it is not as though God does not want to use many people it is not as though God does not want to lift people like pastor said earlier on, there are no grandsons of God. We are all sons in the kingdom. But you see, our possibilities depend on our extent of transformation. So the Bible says it this way. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies, present your bodies unto God a living sacrifice he says holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship let's go to verse 2 verse 2 says and be not conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the system that means there is a way that the world thinks there is a way that the, the cosmos that is under the influence of the antichrist spirit i hope you know that the antichrist spirit is what powers the antichrist system and that the antichrist system has a way that they think and it says do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and that you will be able to prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He did not just excel because he was the son of God. He excelled because there was a mentality. This is the value of mentorship. 
the value of doctrine the value of discipleship that you begin to receive a new orientation that is consistent with the word of god now we come from different cultures we come from different societies we come from different exposure levels different sociological contexts but when we come to the kingdom watch this this is why god sends a teaching priest like your man of god what is his assignment to begin to help you to bring you methodically to a place of understanding to give you a kingdom mentality do not forget this it takes a kingdom mentality to command kingdom exploits it takes more than a sincere desire a kingdom mentality daniel 11 and verse 32 b but the people that do know their god the bible records it says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits you know what that means please look up there are three levels here it says number one knowledge the people that do know it starts with knowledge then the second level is transformation they shall be then exploits they shall do so knowledge transformation and exploits is someone learning the first level you must pass through is the level of transformation and it takes a long time to be transformed because there are many age-old ideas about God, about life, about Satan, about wealth, about poverty. You see that the process of transformation is not something that happens in a weekend. It takes a long time. God has to now give you a new orientation. My question for you this morning, please look up. What do you believe about God? What do you believe about Satan? What do you believe about poverty? What do you believe about wealth? What do you believe about failure? What do you believe about success? What do you believe about death? What do you believe about life? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your destiny? The answer to all this is captured in mentorship and discipleship. It is the assignment of the teaching priest to now begin to unveil the new you in light of scripture. Are we together? So that when you have spent two, three, four, five years in church, it's not just the names of church members you should know alone. You should understand the ways of God. The modus operandi of the kingdom with the precision of an expert to the point that when you see someone, you can simply diagnose the person's situation using the reference of the knowledge you have gotten in scripture. So, if someone comes to you and says, look, nothing is working in my life. I mean, completely no favor no open doors as a believer who has been properly mentored you should know how to attend to that person and it's not just let's pray mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. based on what you were taught diagnose this situation even as i'm saying it now use your mind to diagnose the situation what would if someone comes to you now and says i cannot sleep there are all kinds of spirits oppressing me i wake up in the morning more tired than i was before i slept what will you do don't answer, just think. So that even if you are wrong, at least you don't feel bad. MOG. What is going to be the scriptural? So remember, you are born and you want to go to the nations. Now, here is a specimen. What are you going to do? You will be surprised how that many believers, the only thing they know is, okay, let's pray. Father, you see this situation, help the person in Jesus' name. That's a very sincere approach. But the, Paul says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully. You can attain to a point of mastery. The same way when you come to meet a consultant, while you are shouting and say, sir, I had a pain and then joint pains, he's just smiling at you. And sometimes he may not give you the kind of attention you want. You can even be angry. I'm talking to you about my, he says, I already know what is wrong with you. And he's not lying. He will write a prescription and say, return back rejoicing after five days. Day two, you will call him and say, nothing has changed. He said, just keep doing what I asked you to do. By day five, you are running around and saying, thank you, sir. He said, that's why I'm a consultant. Respect the years of sacrifice. Is someone learning? But many believers are not able to provide solutions because we are not transformed. We are not transformed. 
We have not submitted ourselves to transformation. In one minute, let me request that you lay your hands on your head and cry to the Lord God of heaven. Father, I contend for transformation beginning from this conference in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying? Lay your hands on your head and decree and declare that every thought line, every thought process that is inconsistent with the values of the kingdom, inconsistent with the will of the king, that it will live your life now and live your life forever. Wrong cultural ideas, wrong sociological ideas, ideas that came from sincere people who may not be godly. I'd like you to pray. If you truly want to be used by the king to fulfill the agenda of the kingdom, there has to be a season of transformation. Pray one minute. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please look up. Now, respectfully speaking, transformation that I talk about is not just technological advancement. I think I need to tell you what my idea of transformation is your change which is consistent to the character of Christ. So, you can travel and go overseas and return with another idea which is still an Egyptian idea. You are not transformed. You were only enlightened as far as secular enlightenment is concerned. Because when we talk of transformation, I'm not just talking of moving from a typewriter to a phone. I'm not talking of just from typing to swiping. No. That is important, but I'm talking about the character of the kingdom, the modus operandi of the kingdom now being embedded in your mind. Are we together? So that your first response to life and its challenges is, is as prescribed by scripture. This is what we call transformation. So many people are becoming Western, but not becoming kingdom-minded or scriptural. You can take someone from a village, and respectfully speaking, take someone from America, Europe, put them together. From a technological standpoint, they will be East and West apart. But from a cosmos standpoint, they are all in the same place. Because they will be tested with respect to scripture. Are we together? The second level very quickly so that we wrap up is empowerment. I told you that becoming an ambassador or becoming a witness that serves the purposes of the kingdom demands that you pass through this phase of number one, transformation. Number two, empowerment. Why is empowerment necessary? We'll talk more, of that, more on that in the evening. You cannot fulfill, you cannot achieve the agenda of the king in the strength of the flesh. The strength of the flesh cannot achieve the purposes of the kingdom. No. You are contending against forces of darkness that are determined to ward off the program of God. Jesus himself said, I will build my church. Is that in your Bible? And he says, the gates of hell. So the gates of hell were recognized and acknowledged by Jesus. They are still at work, functional. If God lifts you now and you are the person who will rewrite the narrative of your story, of the, your family, I assure you that Satan is not going to fold his arms and watch you. You need empowerment. Empowerment. Say unto God, Psalm 66 and verse 3, How terrible art thou in your ways. It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. The disciples were already transformed, but Jesus told them, tarry. You already have what to say. You know what to say, but you are not aware of the contentions that will be coming against you. Listen, believers, especially if you are called into the fivefold ministry here, I submit to you that by all means, no matter how enlightened you are, seek genuine empowerment before you become a casualty to yourself and to the body of Christ. You have no idea of the activities of darkness that happen daily to bring down anybody who names the name of Christ. It takes power to remain. If you are called to be a kingdom financier, it takes intelligence, value, relationships to have resources. But the Bible says strong men retain wealth. It takes strength to retain lasting wealth. Are we together? Most people lack strength that if you turn aside in the day of battle, the spiritual diagnosis is that your strength is small. 
empowerment it's a secret that I learned early in ministry and it's an aspect of my life in being a witness and an ambassador that I do not joke with because I realize that to birth the purposes of God with respect to the assignment is committed to my hands is power dependent power dependent mommy it takes power more than compassion to raise children that the devil will not hijack it takes power to take care of five children plus you know how it is in Africa 15 others that are connected to you they don't know you but as you rise they will find you they will say I look related to you and they will investigate and say I'm truly related to you <laughs> are we together nobody takes care of himself alone in Africa you are joking you just don't know the story but keep rising you get to a point where everybody starts coming to greet you and say we answer the same surname there has to be a connection Say power. power. One more time, say power. power. You ask the man of God, he will tell you it's taking power to get to this, this point and this phase in your life and even in ministry. It's taking power to move and the value that God has given him to serve the body of Christ is not just intelligence. He will tell you some of the challenges that the devil will want to bring. There's someone here, you're a businessman. There's someone here, you're a man of God. And you think all it takes to excel is sincerity. I'm introducing a power component for you. This world lies in wickedness. It is, it is a fact that the, someone can get up and say, why are you the one rising? Why are you the one doing well? What if you find yourself in a corporation where you are the only kingdom person not just the only Christian but the only one God can depend upon it takes power it takes power genuine power you need empowerment and I believe that in the course of this conference before it is over in the name of Jesus power from on high will rest upon someone and you will see that that is the missing factor in your business your store already have all the products but no power so you find out that you are deficient in many ways you are a man of God it takes power to command results results that will compel the nations to bring glory to the name of the Lord beyond the excellency of speech there must be a demonstration of power that the faith of the people will not rest upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of God are we blessed it takes power to be rich no wonder the Bible says thou shall remember the Lord thy God Deuteronomy 8 18 for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth why would God mention power and wealth you should talk of power and sickness or power and the miraculous and he uses power for wealth the power to get wealth for the Bible says, except the Lord builds the house. Are we learning? I'm wrapping up. Except the Lord builds a house. The Bible says, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over the city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. Please listen to me. He says, it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. He says, but he giveth his beloved sleep. So if you find yourself struggling in your Christian experience, struggling to command results, and do you know, you know that you need empowerment when you have knowledge, but the grace to defend what you know is not there. So you keep saying a lot of things that are correct, but cannot be proven. You have enlightenment, but no power. For instance, Jesus can heal. Jesus can deliver. Jesus can restore. You are right. Now, the sick come but the power to make your speakings come to pass is not there you see and it's dangerous to speak without the power to demonstrate because in the kingdom believers must hear and see if you say the Lord is good they must see that the Lord is good if you say the Lord prospers this is why people are tired of church because they have been hearing and not seeing. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. The Bible says, And Philip preached Christ in Samaria. 
and the bible says verse 6 that the people gave heed with one accord hearing and seeing hearing and seeing it's not just to indefinitely keep hoping that the lord is good you can taste and see that the lord is good that you can say i came to this church i was down on my rent my children and as i kept hearing the man of god teach and releasing that grace look what my life has become now do you know let me tell you the truth a personal witness with results is powerful when they healed the man at gate beautiful when the jerusalem council summoned peter he went with the man who was healed to stand close to him and they said we don't have any charge there's nothing we can tell this man for many of us the reason why our territories cannot submit to the governing influence of the king is because they respect the truthfulness of our speakings but the power component is missing and unfortunately our idea power is so missing in the body of christ that we have reduced our idea to power to just falling down so the moment someone falls down at least it's justified that i'm anointed doesn't matter what you think about me again at least <laughs> not being sarcastic but it's really funny and laughable are you kidding so when something hits you and you fall down does is that power you know what power is the ability to veto the current realities of men and rewrite their destinies to be consistent with the will of god that is power that you can look at a man who came to church now and that person by evening he will be locked up and you stand and in the name of jesus you create a climate of favor that in two hours what that man has not gotten in one year comes to him that is power genuine power look what jesus did 10 lepers and he says stand up go and show yourself to the priest the bible says as they went a miracle began to happen there was embarrassment that was imminent in a feast are we together now and he said don't worry i'm here i can solve that embarrassment once and for all and then fill six pots he said go and serve the rulers that was the end of it one time he went to peter's house and the mother-in-law who should help them was sick another embarrassment again and he went and held her hands and lifted her listen ladies and gentlemen if you are a businessman the day you carry power you can place that contract on the ground and lay your hands you have been sending an empty paper with ink on it that's why people are rejecting you the day you add power i know what i'm saying don't you think i'm just doing pentecostal talk no the power of the holy ghost is a very missing component in the body of christ is the reason why we keep talking about so many things you see now many people are getting to a point where they are saying listen we are tired of church and the herbalist is saying i am an alternative social media is saying i am an alternative all kinds of religions are saying we are alternatives we can't tell believers to stop going to herbalists and stop going to shrines until we we offer an alternative that works Are we together some of us here have loved ones who are trusting god for healing some of us have been grounded by all kinds of demonic forces and it is so painful to see a christian who loves jesus with all their heart and and their love for jesus is known to all but they never move forward that is a bad description of jesus and the devil likes such people so when he finds a sister who is faithful in church a brother who is serving they tie down that destiny so that it becomes a portrait that misrepresents god that is the assignment of power the assignment of power is to rewrite that narrative that the brother you were laughing at and saying look at these church people he rejected bribe in his office you would have been a billionaire right now by just signing your signature but in the name of some Christian thing, you said you will not compromise. And then the God of heaven comes and lifts you. Do you know what it means when God's people are lifted? It is a very strong message that even encourages other believers. Am I right on that? Let me two more minutes. 
I'm going to request that you lay your hands one more time and say, Lord, where my life has been bankrupt of power, in this season I insist, and in this conference I pray, the power components that is required to represent your purposes, not just in ministry, and not just talking of power to heal the sick, power to go forward, power to go forward in spite of the economy, power to make progress in spite of the wickedness of men power to make advancement in spite of tribal sentiments open your mouth and pray pray on behalf of your children pray on behalf of your spouse someone pray the power to prosper the power for signs and wonders the power to raise the power that brings influence commanding genuine consistent ever increasing kingdom results for the sake of his majesty and for the glory of the king 